Lands. Explain those bad lands. That's a hell of a name. All right, welcome to this week's episode of Breaking History on Badlands Media, where Gordon and I provide as much historical and epistemological philosophical context to help shape the the things that we're slapped with on social media and the news on a day-to-day basis that often lacks that vital context so necessary to form proper judgments and navigate uh, through this whole terrain of misinformation, disinformation, uh, but not exactly the way that people like Ursula van der Leyen would have it have it unfold so how you doing gordon i'm great man i'm great um yeah just uh got back from california i uh, two nights ago um so you can probably tell it's nighttime so we we pre-recorded last week because i was in california for gart uh for badlands gart uh on last wednesday and then flew in and have some work stuff going on tomorrow when the show airs so we are pre-recording this week but um, starting going back to I think normal schedules next week, we should be fine. But uh, man, great weekend in Gart, great weekend in Southern California. Um, a lot of people said a lot, a lot, a lot of really nice things about you. So um, yeah, I think Matt has a lot of fans out there in the Badlands world. Well, that that that's good for my soul to hear. All right, <laughs> that's nice. Thank you. <laughs> I wish I could have come down. Uh, it, unfortunately, here I'm stuck in uh, the northern outpost of Canada, so it's it's a little difficult sometimes to move around. But I was there in spirit. And uh, today we've got a lot to touch upon. I know you and I were discussing a little bit what would be the most strategic thing to bring up in the short hour. Maybe we can play a little bit longer than an hour, but we don't have, we still have a limited amount of time, but what would be the most strategic things to bring to the table? And obviously right now, I think uh, on top of people's minds is or should be uh, some of the developments going down in Davos, this thing that happens once a year where a slimy, slimy event that uh, was kicked off back in 1971 um, occurs. Not always, not exactly high level in the sense of Bilderberger uh, group high level, but certainly some some major uh, discussions, uh, inner clubs, uh, groups within groups discussing and, and plotting out some very bad ideas um, for humanity as a whole more generally. And um, obviously, there's uh, some some disputes as well. Not everybody's in accord with what exactly um, the new emerging system is going to look like, how it's going to unfold. There's some disruptive elements as well that uh, don't like the idea of a unipolar death cult, reducing all of civilization to uh, 500 million, I think, is the... uh, Mm -hmm acceptable consensus amongst the computer models that the creatures of Davos have all, all agreed upon. Some some nations and have organized themselves in such a manner as to reject that idea, as well as rejecting the idea of, of abolishing their ancient traditions and heritages. So I think that there's a few things that you've observed that I've observed. I don't know if you want to uh, share an element on that uh, first, or should I, should I just play a, a little clip by Ursula van der Leyen and then jump into it? No, I think I think uh, that that's a good setup. Um, I'll say that uh, I think the other event that we're going to talk about after Davos is we're going to talk about The Hague, which is yeah. the International Court of Justice. And right now, um, people probably heard about the uh, the case going the court case going on there between that South Africa has brought uh, the, the accusation of genocide against Israel. Um, both sides have now delivered their arguments in the preliminary hearing, which is just a determine if the, if an injunction or a ceasefire should be imposed by the UN against right. Israel. It's con, it's considered the biggest case ever brought to The Hague. Um, so we'll get into that. I think these two things that we're going to talk about, Davos, this particular episode of Davos um, and The Hague situation are directly connect, connected. Mm-hmm. And I don't think it's a coincidence that they're unfolding at the exact same moment. But we'll get into that conspiratorial talk in a minute. Absolutely. So let's do, let's do this. How about the, I jump in with a I'll, I'll let Ursula um echo some of my remarks from from the opening uh intro regarding the fear of disinformation and misinformation which are such great threats to humanity and then we'll uh, i, I want to say a little thing about that and then we can just expand on some of some of this some of this because people could smell certain creeping orwellian um censorship policies creeping around being bantered about um so here let's just listen to something from somebody who wants to build trust again. That, that is the theme of this this year's Davos Summit is bu- rebuilding trust where a bunch of billionaire soci- sociopaths want a, want a big hug. <laughs> For the global business community, 
The top concern for the next two years is not conflict or climate. It is disinformation and misinformation followed closely by polarization within our societies. These risks are serious because they limit our ability to tackle the big global challenges we are facing. Changes in our climate and our geopolitical climate, shifts in our demography and in our technology, spiraling regional conflicts and intensified geopolitical competition and their impacts on supply chains. The sobering reality is that we are once again competing more intensely across countries than we have in several decades. And this makes the theme of this year's Davos meeting even more relevant, rebuilding trust. This is not a time for conflicts or polarization. This is a time to build trust. This is a time to drive global collaboration more than ever before. This requires immediate and structural responses to match the size of the global challenges. I believe it can be done. I wonder why people would not have trust in the <laughs> the Borg zombies running our world. I wonder why. Because I mean, what what is she thinking about? I mean, there there's there's obviously uh, this idea that disinformation, misinformation, conspiracy theorizing, which were outlined by Cass Sunstein, the husband of Samantha Powers, in um, and also the, one of the advisors to the World Health Organization's behavioral. Uh, insights team that was part of the whole COVID response apparatus to try to shape people's behaviors. This is a, a major economic behaviorist, Cass Sunstein, who uh, wrote the conspiracy theory document in 2008, where he outlined what would we do for the dangerous per pervasiveness of conspiracy theories of people losing faith in their governments and how could governments respond to that? Because this is obviously a major security issue if people lose faith in the the corporate media and the the stenographers in in the, the mainstream media who are basically CIA shills just receiving and passing on memos that they're given from the intelligence agencies then that might be disruptive because what happens if you if you allow that well this while Ursula is speaking you have things like this in Germany <laughs> all over the place farmers doing actually doing something to stop the solutions that Ursula is trying to put propose to stop global warming uh which is shut down food production destroy farmers Yo, I'm sorry for that I just had to show oh, <laughs> there's so many of these these images where Germany as a whole the farmers are doing just like they did in the Netherlands just like we saw at the truckers convoy they're organizing and organizing to shut down the supply chains for, towards things like Amazon the retailers um and they're really moving across the board and it's contagious so this is the sort of thing that they wouldn't be doing if they w did not have access to these disruptive conspiracy theories that are just spreading and spreading so yeah that's yeah, one of the well, of the, the well, Brian, Brian and I were uh, on Balance Daily last week, played a video of um, of the farmers spraying their buildings with uh, with manure. I don't know if you've seen those. Those yeah. are fantastic, which I think that's like one of that's probably takes the cake as the best form of protest I've ever seen in my life is just hosing down a government building with actual liquid manure is fantastic. Um, I've also seen um, that. I think the Polish farmers are now teaming up with the German farmers who are also teaming up with the with the, the Dutch farmers. So you actually are seeing like an international order, like like come to like collaboration happening. You would think that the World Economic Forum would be very excited about this. I thought they loved, you know, international cooperation. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> beautiful. I love that. Yeah. And, no, that, and, and maybe a little yeah. piece of advice to them. Maybe find somebody as a speaker who is, doesn't have such like an evil sounding accent like that. You know, I, I know she can't help it, but maybe just find someone who doesn't really have. I mean, Klaus Schwab, or 